It's time now to check your money with America's Money Maven, Vicki Brackens. Vicki Brackens is the president of Brackens Financial Solutions Network, LLC, and a registered representative of LPL Financial, member SIPC. Vicki, guess what month it is now? It is October. October is here, baby. You ready? No, because I'm freezing. <laughs> it's almost like we went, we went from summer, forget fall, just summer, winter. I had to yeah. turn the heat on, George. So I know you for turned some the heat our, on already. Yes. For some of our you. listeners and viewers, they're going like heat. Yes, we turned the heat on because I think it was like 44 degrees last night or the night before. So yes, it's October. And I will tell you, it's the we're beginning the last quarter of the year, which means um, that we now need to start getting ready for our year end wrap up as far as our expenses and how we're setting up our reporting and our taxes. And one of the things I will uh, talk about just as uh, before we end today is a particular strategy that I believe will be very beneficial around some tax savings for everyone. So stay tuned. But right. right now, I want to introduce a special guest. We got a special Every guest in the building. Special guest in the building. As everyone's probably seen, there's this handsome young man here on, on screen, Mr. Michael Jennings, who is the Business Development Associate for Bracken's Financial Solutions Network. Let me go back and just um, sort of bring everybody up to date. As you remember, it was almost two years ago, based on what happened with COVID, I made an announcement that I had uh, formed an affiliation with a partner firm down in Virginia, and we had formed a new company, Heritage Financial Partners, and that the emphasis was going to be on bringing new talent into the financial planning, financial services industry. Well, Mike, J Michael Jennings here in Syracuse, New York, uh, joined the firm uh, as a part of that effort. He's here with Bracken's Financial Solutions Network. And I thought it would make a lot of sense to introduce him to our viewing and listening audience, but get everybody accustomed to seeing this face because we're really, really thrilled that he's joined the team. He's a brother. Oh, Mike, uh, George, you can't see. Uh, well, I guess some people are listening, so they can't see that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. But anyway, um, Mike, how are you today? I'm doing pretty good, Vicki. I can't complain. Wonderful, wonderful. So I, uh, you know, George trained me this way. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, always make sure when you have someone new who you're bringing into, into an audience to ask them this first question, which is, how did you get here? Tell uh, us your story. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good question. I ask myself that pretty much every day. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, I'm Syracuse through and through. I, I, I was born and raised here. Um, I, I went to school here. I went to college here. And now I serve the community here. And, you know, some of the things that I think of uh, when I hear that question, um, it's, it's not necessarily how, how I got here, but it's the fact that I'm here now. And it's time to get to work. Hold on, Michael. But, Can I just say, you said I went to school here. Well, what does that mean? Did you go to elementary? We need names. We need, yeah. to, we need to take <laughs> names, bro. Uh, well, I, I'm a Northside kid. So I, I went to Webster Elementary. Okay. I went to Grant. Yes. Uh, and I went to ITC, uh, Institute of Technology at Syracuse Central. That's downtown in Syracuse. Okay. And then I went on to go to Syracuse University where I earned my bachelor's in anthropology and forensics. Thank you. All right. So now we know, because when you say I went to school, we, we don't know what that means. All right. You're good, bro. <laughs> very good. Very good. So now, now, Mike, I heard you say that I earned my degree at Syracuse University in anthropology and forensics. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, and we had a, a good conversation about this as far as uh, coming into the financial services industry. But why don't you tell, uh, tell our audience a little bit about why you think those two skill sets are applicable to the work that you will uh, be doing and the career that you've chosen in financial planning. Absolutely. And I think actually this is, uh, we brought this up in our very first conversation, you and I, Vicki, uh, but anthropology, it's, it's, if you don't know what anthropology is, it's literally just the study of humans. Um, and this is a, a person, a people's job. So when it comes to being a financial advisor, you have to know how to talk to people. You got to know how to connect to people. And you, you kind of have to know how, how people behave in certain situations, because a lot of the times, you know, growing up in, in, a, in an environment where you're surrounded by the symptoms of things like enduring poverty or 
um, improper financial planning, it's easy to get to the mindset of being like, okay, this is being complacent. This is, this is how it is. And, and it's not, you know, some things in life require action and your, your finances is, is one of them. Um, but again, uh, with anthropology, it's just being a people's person, knowing how to connect with people, um, understanding people, their, their feelings, their emotions, and more importantly, the, their goals and their dreams and helping them get to that. And the financial aspect, I'm uh, sorry, the forensic aspect, um, that's, a, that's a lot closer to, to what we do as far as when you meet a person, you know, they, they come with a story, just like you, you would, uh, you, you, it's a little morbid, but, you know, going to a, a crime scene and you have to figure out, okay, what happened here? What can I do to help now that I'm here? Yeah, it's some people's same. finances are a crime scene, but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but I, I'll let you say it. That's, that's my job. You good. You good. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. So those two, and, and you know, we, we had this conversation, but I thought it was really important to bring it out to, to our audience that the skill sets that you develop in have in anthropology and forensics, as far as your, your studies are concerned, very much overlay into the types of skill sets that are going to be very uh, beneficial to the clients that uh, that uh, join you there at Bracken's Financial Solutions Network and to the furtherment of your career. So now, Mike, you know the story of Heritage Financial Partners, but I'm going to give everybody just a, a little bit of a, a tidbit. Bracken's Financial Solutions Network formed a joint venture with another firm in Virginia, which was First Genesis of Virginia to form Heritage Financial Partners. Brackens and, and First Genesis still exist, but this is an umbrella organization whose mission really is to develop new talent into the industry, bring in individuals who are currently already in the industry um, who are black and brown. We really are focusing on developing talent in this industry, in these particular segments, because only 3% of the entire uh, financial planning industry is represented by African-Americans and Latinx. Latinos in, in, uh, in, in the country. But the third thing is to look at firms, uh, excuse me, second, that look at individuals who are already in the industry, but who may not be happy or satisfied or getting the kind of support they need to grow their practices into business entities, go from being just employees to business owners in financial planning and in financial services. Uh, to, to, to welcome them and say, join us and come and come have a conversation with us. And then finally, for those people like me, who've gotten gray hair and, you know, in 30 and 40 years, don't you laugh, I see you there, 30 and 40 years in the industry, who want to make sure that their practices and their firms continue beyond them, to build in succession plans. We really, really want to talk to you because it, it really um, does not bode well for, for the industry growth within these particular segments as far as African-American Latinos, if we continue starting from zero. So what I want to hear finally from you, Mike, is this. You are new, starting your career, made a decision that this was the right career for you, but what advice would you give to someone who's thinking about making that call to us to say, I want to consider this as a career choice for me? What would you say? What advice would you give them? Yeah, I would say first and foremost, um, this isn't an easy job, but it's a necessary job. And it's a job where you're continually learning and growing and developing. And one of the best things about this job is that you can earn a pretty good living. Uh, and unlike other jobs, uh, well, many other jobs, you can earn a living by helping others uh, reach their financial goals and, and dreams and really see them flourish. And, and that's, that's the point of the job. So if you have a, a passion for connecting with others, if you have a passion for learning and growing, if you have a passion um, for just helping people, this is, this is a job for you. And we're here to help. If you have any questions regarding you know, how to get into this business, what it truly entails, uh, just give either Vicky or I a call and, and we'll talk to you and we'll let you know exactly what goes into being a financial advisor. I said, why don't they give you a call? Because Vicky, good. What's your number? <laughs> <laughs> if you call Vicky, she'll more than likely uh, direct you. All right, we're good. She'll give the number <laughs> later on. <laughs> that was great, George. Well, listen, Mike, thank you very much for, for joining us this afternoon. I'm sure everybody here in Syracuse, because as you said, you are a homegrown 
entity. Um, many people can have, have been part of your journey as supporters, and we ask them to continue to be supporters of you as you develop your career here in, in financial services and financial planning in particular, okay, investment management over the next, I'm going to say one day you will be the person sitting here with the shiny hair, okay, because you've had a long prosperous career, but uh, all joking aside, we thank you for, for joining, uh, joining me today and, and, and getting, and for everyone who's been supporting and, and cheering you on and uh, look to fit forward to seeing you again and having you again soon on, on, the, on the segment. Thank you, Michael. Let me give that number so people are like, I want to call that brother right now. 315-930-4499. 315-930-4499. There you go. Take care, Mike. Good to see you. Thank you. Seems like a fine young man, Vicky. Yes, he is. Okay, absolutely. Absolutely. We're really, really, can you see the, the joy? I'm, I'm really proud of him. And he's from around the way. So it's really, when he tells you he went to Webster and, Grant. you know, right around the, he's from around the way. So yes, if he yes. can do it, you can do it. So absolutely. Uh, really encouraged by that young man. So I'll say this very quickly, because I know we spent a lot of time, but the, the tax savings that I wanted to talk to everyone about is this. If you are currently receiving your RMD, required minimum distribution, there is a way for you to empower charities associated in, in, that you may be, um, may be you know, supporting right now through the use of your RMD versus taking that, that's required minimum distribution in cash and actually paying taxes on it. It's called the Qualified Charitable Distribution, or you may see in literature, QCD, which allows you to, to take your RMD and directly, it has to be done directly from the broker dealer or from the account holder, right to the charity. But instead of paying taxes on that money, the money now is no longer counted in your, in your taxable income. So basically you're saving money on those, on those taxes because you have to take the RMD anyway. You have no way to avoid it. And you can use that money from your RMD to empower or to donate to your charities versus money coming out of your savings account or your checking account and save taxes in, in the process. If you have questions about the QCD, be sure and reach out to me at area code 315-930-4499 or info at brackensfsn.com. Well, George, I'll finally say our plate is definitely full today. And uh, make sure, uh, by the way, also to go on YouTube. There you go. I just see you YouTube. <laughs> Vicky, I was Facebook. just about to say, go to YouTube, <laughs> like, and, and share. And like and share. All yes. Right. And Have comment and comment too. Thank you. And as, a, as a matter of fact, Vicky, uh, I went into somebody the other day who said, I really enjoy those segments on, on YouTube and on the radio. And so... Um, um, it, it definitely is something that people should should take, and all it's indexed. There's a lot of different topics, and we invite you to go back in Financial Solutions, where you can find all of these conversations. Thanks. All right. all right. Now you did say your plate was full, right? My plate is definitely full. Okay. Vicky Brackens is the president of Brackens Financial Solutions Network LLC and a registered representative of LPL Financial Member SIPC. We know her as America's Money Maven.